As I was in training for epilepsy, I took care of many children, and uh, one of the most common questions that parents have when I diagnose their child with epilepsy is whether or not they'll be able to come off medicine. And so that prompted me to think about what the risks are for children as they come off medicine, and I think the most concerning one is that their seizures will be hard to control. For example, you have a child who comes on their first medication and they're doing very, very well, they're seizure free, they come off, and now suddenly they're on three different medications and still having seizures. I think that was the parents and frankly my main concern. So I decided to do a population-based study using the Rochester Epidemiology Project to look at that very question. What is the risk of intractable epilepsy in children who have well-controlled seizures and then have their anti-seizure medication withdrawn? So there was initially about 305 children that I looked at, and then of that, about 250 really fulfilled the criteria for epilepsy. And then of that number, about close to 40% of children actually became seizure-free and had their seizure medication withdrawn. I then looked at those who were followed for five years and looked to see, first of all, how many of them would have seizure recurrence. And about a third of them had seizure recurrence, and of that third, more than half of them recurred within the first year. So that was really the, that's really the time frame where we worry the most, is the first year. Interestingly enough, 20% of those children had seizure recurrence after being a number of years seizure-free. So then I looked at those children who had seizure recurrence and then restarted their medication, which is about 15, and which of those would really fulfill the criteria for having intractable epilepsy. And of those 15, it was 20%. So of the overall number of children, it's about a 5% risk. Now that may seem really high, but that's similar to the risk of intractable epilepsy just in any child, just starting medication. And that's also, it's also pretty similar to the risk of intractable epilepsy that's been shown in other population-based studies. So it's a pretty low risk. So there's two terms that parents will hear the most. One is seizure disorder. The other one is epilepsy. And what a lot of people don't know is that it's the exact same thing. And all you have to do to get a diagnosis of seizure disorder or epilepsy is have two or more recurrent unprovoked seizures. So you may say, well, what's an unprovoked seizure? That's something that's not caused by a high fever in a small child, like a febrile convulsion, doesn't happen in the setting of a significant medication toxicity or head trauma. It has to be completely unprovoked. We don't know what causes it. And all it takes is having two of those to get you the diagnosis of epilepsy. Anyone who has one seizure has about a 50% risk of having another one. But by the time you've had more than two, the risk of having another seizure is very high. And as far as what's considered intractable, that definition can vary depending on where you are. But the big picture is that these are children or adults who have recurrent seizures that have not responded to at least two, usually three medications at the highest tolerated doses. So these are seizures that are very hard to control. So when I start a child on medication, for most parents, that is the first question they ask. How long does my child need to take this medication, and what are the long-term side effects, and can they stop? And I think there's a number of reasons why they ask that. For one, which is the most basic, it's sometimes difficult to get medication into children. They don't like to take it, and they don't understand why they have to. The other thing is it's sometimes difficult to remember to give medication to children. So we don't like to give them any more medicine than necessary. And another thing to think about is up to this point, very few, if any, of the children have ever had to take a chronic medication. They're accustomed to taking 10 days of antibiotics for an ear infection, and then that makes the ear infection go away. So a lot of times parents come in with the same understanding. Well, if I give them the seizure medication for three months, it should make the seizures go away, and that's it. And that's a misnomer for these medications. They're frequently called anti-epileptic medications, but it's really not true. They don't stop the formation of epilepsy. They just treat the seizures. They're anti-seizure medications. So that's the first part. It's a chronic medication, and it's their first experience. The second part is none of these medications are without side effects. These are medications that affect the brain, so they're very likely to have high side effects. If you think about how anti-seizure medications work, their goal is to decrease the excitability of the brain. Well, it's that same excitability that's important for learning. 
So we always worry that it might cause some cognitive slowing and difficulty learning. And that's a pretty common side effect for any anti-seizure medication, some sedation and cognitive slowing. Plus, there may be problems with behavior side effects, weight gain, weight loss, change in appetite. Those that are metabolized through the liver, it can cause some liver damage. Um, there's potential for electrolyte imbalances. There's, there's a number of side effects that can happen with all these medications. For some of them, the longer they're on, the more they are prone to side effects. Not with all medications, but it is the case with some. So in general, we always like to treat children for the shortest period possible and with the least medication possible in order to keep them safe. Like I said, it was a vast minority of children who developed intractable epilepsy and still a minority who even had seizure recurrence. But the next step is to look at the risk factors to go back even 10 years prior to increase our numbers and see if we can predict who would be the children who are more likely to have seizure recurrence. Um, there's a lot of literature out there, but it's still um, something that's not very well known. We don't know what makes this child different from this child, even if they have the same epilepsy. So um, as I was going through these charts, I actually looked at um, you know, how their, even their neonatal course was, whether or not they were a sick baby or if they were very healthy from the start, if they've had developmental delay, if it took them a long time to get under control with their seizures, and how many medications it took to get their seizures under control, and other, risk fac other potential risk factors for developing intractable epilepsy, with the goal of being able to determine who would have the intractable epilepsy and then not take them off medication.